Hey, how's it going? This is Sebastian, and today I'll be doing a follow-up video to a video I did a couple years ago on how to cut raw chicken to feed your dogs. Uh, my dogs are older now, and I also have a four-pound chihuahua, so that makes four dogs in total, and uh, that's a lot of chicken to cut up. So I'm going to show you exactly how I feed them and how I've been doing it for years. Now, before I start chopping chicken, I want to make it clear that my dogs are not on a 100% carnivore diet. I did that for a while and I found it to be uh, quite expensive and way too time consuming and um, their stools weren't as consistent as I had hoped. Uh, so I ended up settling on giving them either boiled potatoes or cooked rice with their chicken. And um, occasionally I'll put beef liver or chicken hearts or gizzards uh, to supplement their diet. Um, once in a while I'll get carrots to help clean, you know, provide some roughage for their teeth. But um, other than that, it, I'll just show you exactly what I feed them. Alright, so first things first is we're going to need all the tools and materials required to feed these dogs. I've already got the rice cooked and ready to go. I like to get good quality jasmine rice because rice is cheap in itself and so I might as well get them the good stuff. And I make sure to cook it with a little bit of extra water because the dogs need a little extra water in their rice. It's okay to give a rice that's a little bit soggy to dogs. They'll be just fine. Uh, it's not okay to give them rice that's undercooked because it will absorb the water that they need to digest in their bellies. It'll absorb too much. and uh, it. Just make sure you put enough water in the rice. Soggy rice is better than dry rice when it comes to dogs. All right, so you can use a typical chef knife like this, uh, but personally I've found that a knife like this, a little more solid, a little more weight to it, uh, has a better effect on chopping this chicken. I get my chicken from, I get my chicken from Walmart and I get in these 10 pound bags, these leg quarters, and uh, I get five to 10 of them at a time. They're about $7 each at Walmart, and I bring them all home and I put them in my freezer, and uh, when, I, when it's time to feed them, a, a day before I feed my dogs, I pull out the chicken and I put it in this cheap bucket that I got from Dollar General, and I let it dethaw overnight, and then I feed them in the morning or in the evening, it doesn't matter. So, here we go. We slice open the bag. We've got lots of chicken. Oh, before we begin, we must hone our knife, or sharpen our knife. People say that this doesn't sharpen the knife, but I've found that if I don't do this, it, it, I can barely cut chicken. So, if it's not sharpening it, it's doing something that's the equivalent of sharpening. And it works. It takes some practice to get it just right, and every blade is different. This one requires me to go a little slower, whereas this one, I'm a little more comfortable with this one, and I can just get after it. But this one, it's so thick, and it's got such a precise edge that I have to go real slow. All right, a few times is usually good enough. Here we go, we got our chicken. Yummy. Here we got the drumstick. Right, this is the drumstick and this is the thigh. First thing we need to do is we need to separate the two. So right here, there's a knuckle. If you get the right spot, you can slice through it with almost no effort at all. No pushing, no pounding. Okay. Take all this extra skin and fat, cut it off. They don't digest this very well, but you can heat it up in a pan, melt down the fat, and pour that in the food for them. Uh, they digest that just fine. But this raw, fleshy fat, it, mm, it doesn't come out too well in their stools. So I'll either throw that away or I'll melt it down for them. It depends. Sometimes they're looking a little skinny. I'll, I'll melt it down and make sure they get a little extra fat. Okay, so now we have two pieces. We want to take our drumstick and get a... There's, there's a couple sizes of drumstick. You want to make sure that the part you cut is facing up, right? Grab this good hunk of meat right here. Very carefully put your knife edge along the knuckle. 
and slice down a little bit. Okay, slice down a little tiny bit. Now pull this meat off of the bone while you're holding the bone down with your knife and slice along the bone and down. So you get your nice fillet of chicken. Now if you have like a 50 pound dog, this is fine uh, as a whole chunk, but if you have a 20 pound dog or, or something like that, you want to chop this down a little bit more like that. Okay. As my dogs get older, I used to feed them this entire drumstick, bone and all, but as they got older, they were struggling and uh, one of my dogs actually uh, choked one time and I had to pull it out, so I just decided to stop doing that. Now, that was one time he choked out of a thousand times of feeding him like that. But I still don't like the risk, so I just cut out the drumsticks and I don't give them to them anymore. Okay. So as you saw, I just cut off the rest of that meat and now I have a clean drumstick here, okay? You can cut off the knuckle here and give them the knuckle, but again, that's kind of a choking hazard and when you do, when you hit that, uh, shards can fly out and hit you in the eye, so I stopped doing that as well. That just goes in the trash. We got the thigh right here. This is the spine, okay? When you're looking at the chicken from the back, okay, this is the butt, this is the spine, and the leg was here, so this is the thigh. Okay, it's got like a little weird thing. I sometimes I'll chop it off and give it to him. Sometimes I throw it away. This one's quite fatty, so I'll just toss it with the drumstick. All right, so go from the spine. You have this little flap of meat connected right here. I chop that off. Okay, I'll put my thumb in where all these juices and all this good stuff is, and I'll. Pull that out. Boom, that goes in their meal. Okay, now here's the trickiest part. You're gonna separate the spine and hip bone from the thigh. It's connected right here. And you have to put your thumb on the spine here and slice in between the two. Just, not too much, just, you'll hit a knuckle right here get to that knuckle and you'll be fine. Once you've hit that knuckle, I take my knife and I put it into the thigh bone up here so I can get a good grip on the slice that I've just created and I pull it open like that. Once I have that open, you can see the cavity where the knuckle used to be. Put your knife right in that cavity and you'll get a nice clean slice, just like that. The skin, if it pulls away like that, I'll just cut that off and I'll add that to the skin pile, the fatty pile, and then cook that down in a frying pan for them. Okay, now on this spine, you still have two chunks of meat left. Okay, here's the socket where the, where the bone was. Right along here, make one cut right there, and then put your finger in there and shove it down and you'll come out with this clean nugget of meat for them. Okay. You might have to cut that a little bit and boom. Okay, so that little nugget came off clean. This one won't come off so clean. You just kind of have to slice downwards. Okay. And please be careful while you're doing all this. It's a lot of cutting. It takes a lot of practice. I've cut myself probably four times, five times in learning how to do all this over the years. But once I got it and I slowed myself down, I stopped cutting myself. And I don't, I don't ever make mistakes now. I, maybe once a year I'll slightly cut myself but barely okay so now we have this thigh the thigh left um, you can give them the thigh bones but I would not give them to them whole like this because it's a large mass of meat again you grab the meat the, the, the most the most meat you can you go along the bone you just cruise along the bone there and you, you separate the bone from the meat okay boom nice large chunk Okay. See how the bone is already exposed here? I'm going to put more. I'm going to slice along that. Right there. And that pulls away the flesh a little bit more so that I can then again grab the meat, put it along the bone, slide along the bone. Easy. Now you have your meat prepared for your dogs. 
So I have a four pound chihuahua, like I said, and so what I do is I'll take these sections and I will chop them up finely for him. And so he's, he's tiny, he's got a tiny mouth, and he, was, he came from uh, a, a messed up situation, and so he doesn't have front teeth, so I have to make sure that this chicken is chopped well for him. Otherwise he can't eat or he'll choke, and that's not acceptable. So I chop up the chicken into small bits like this for him. It's, it's, easiest, it's easiest to do this with the thigh meat because the drumsticks have a bunch of tendons in them. Okay. And so for Pee Wee, my little guy, he will get this chicken just like this with over a small bit of rice. His dinner will look exactly like this. A little bit of rice, boom. That's a little dog. The big dogs get the same thing, except I will add, I will take this spine and I will boil it. In I'll take all my spines that I have left over and I will boil them so that there is a, a nice chicken broth and I'll pour that in with their meal. And uh, I think that gives them a lot of extra whatever nutrients are located in this region. Um, so that's about it. I will for for each dog, I will do two pieces of chicken per meal. So this is half. This is ha this is about half of one portion for one dog. And so now I have to do uh, five more pieces of chicken. Um, yeah, I'll do that, and then we'll continue the video. So once you're done chopping your chicken, I've done five pieces today for my dogs. Um, you have to take the rest of the chicken out of the bag and put them into gallon bags with sliders. You want sliders because of the juices that come out um, and you, you have to take it out of this bag because there's, it's sitting in its own juices and it's contaminated and if you want the chicken to last to the next day or even longer, you have to put them into these gallon bags and so that is a very crucial step every time I chop chicken I have to save the rest of the chicken for tomorrow or the next day whenever whenever I give them chicken next because honestly after a full meal of chicken like this they can go they can go a full day with just like a couple eggs or a big bowl of milk uh, and they'll be just fine Alrighty, so now that I've got the steaming rice and soup in there, along with the cold chicken, I'm going to mix it up so that the temperature of the chicken equalizes with the temperature of the soup and the rice so that it's not super hot when I give it to them. And if it's still hot after I mix it up, I will put in a couple ice cubes to help cool it down quicker or just wait, you know, an extra 20 minutes for it to cool down. Make sure when you pour the soup, into these bowls that these bowls are a made of metal because plastic will melt and b make sure you put it on a surface that won't burn or melt i.e i put mine on a stove top you could also put it on stone counter but do not put it on plastic counters do not put it on linoleum it will heat warp and destroy your house if you put that hot liquid directly like that put it on the stove obviously not on the hot burner pour your soup and your rice in with the chicken mix it up so that the chicken cools it off and if it still needs cooling further another ice cube 